guys welcome back to another video so today i'm going to be showing you how you can build yourself a basic emmy controller or basic emmy system so this, this guide is aimed at early game players or um, not early game players just players who aren't more who aren't experienced in applied energistics too say that this is your first time using it and you and you've been told emmy systems are amazing for storing items for your friends which is true um and you want to build one but you're not sure how this guide is for you otherwise i'd recommend watching another guide of mine or uh, showing how to build like an advanced demi system so i'll cover all the basics a couple of basic machines maybe auto crafting something like that so uh so at any point in this video if you feel like your emmy system is good enough you can stop watching that basically means um i'll slowly go through so i'll first show you how to get an emmy system that just stores items and then I'll show you how to add it so you can wirelessly access it. Then I'll show you how you can attach auto crafting to it. Then I'll show you how you can attach some machines to it. And so I'll show you how to slowly expand it. But at any point, if you feel like your M system is good enough, then just stop watching. That's perfectly fine. So to start off, so for any ME system, you're going to need a, a one ME controller. You're also going to need at least one terminal. I'd recommend one ME crafting terminal, as that uh, has crafting that allows you to have like crafting grid and stuff, which is really nice. Um, and but just a basic ME terminal is fine, even that. Um, you're also gonna need at least one ME drive, which uh, I've got here, and I'd recommend 10 64k storage cells. That basically um, these basically allow you to store items and are a are the are the best size you can get in applied energistics too if you're using a different if you're using more other mods like a additions they add 16 they add even better storage cells which are a lot bigger but are extremely expensive to craft so it's not want to actually building it you're going to want to have the emmy control effectively as the heart of it which is what everything connects to as you see with this one everything kind of coming out of the heart so then you're going to need cables I would personally recommend smart cables um, as they allow you to see all the different channels but um, if you're using uh, maybe what's another uh, if you're using um, ME glass cables uh, that's perfectly fine as well but smart cables let you to see the channels which I find quite nice so first we're going to attach the RF source which uh, see we have coming out the bottom this to do this if you want to have lots of channels, which is what I would recommend, I would recommend getting an energy acceptor. Where was it? Uh, I don't think I've got one. Um, here, and having that, that basically allows you to change RF and plug RF into your IME system. If you don't want to have an energy acceptor, because they might be too expensive or something, you can just plug um, uh, flux ducts into the side of your ME controller. However, um, you can't plug flux ducts into uh, smart cables and stuff, so you're going to need an energy acceptor if you uh, want to maximise channels. So then, um, you uh, so then on the back of it, you might want to have say that we have our flux ducts coming off it, and then a creative RF source, which I'll just get quick, right now quickly. Um, creative RF source, bang! Now we have a working controller. So this is so then you're now going to want your terminals. I would recommend having one of each terminal for whenever you need it, um, but this is completely not necessary. Especially the fluid terminal, even I don't use a fluid terminal yet on my uh, solo or my single player world. But if you if you use, them, they're, they're quite nice just to have in case you ever need it. So then, yeah. So two ones I'd uh, first recommend is a crafting terminal, then a pattern terminal. Um, an interface terminal is also quite nice, but uh, yeah. I, I, an interface terminal allows you to keep track of all your auto crafting connections. So now we've got our terminal set up, we're now going to want to set up storage. So where's my cables? Uh, so you're, you might want to have, I'd recommend at least one ME drive. I uh, You might want to get two if you've got a quantum query attached to this ME system and you're running out of uh, space. So then you're going to want at least 1064k storage cells. I'm going to go for 20 just to make sure I don't run out because that's what I was using when I had a quantum query set up uh, back when I was more in the mid game of my single player world. Um, so now right now you can 
just this is a finary system. You can maybe take off all of these other terminals, have one dr uh, ME drive, and fill up the like 64k storage cells, and then you can just store items. So that's perfectly fine. As you can, as you can build it like that. If say that you want to set up maybe uh, wireless uh, wireless access, then you're going to want a security terminal. So say that we set where should we set it up? Possibly along this side. Um, so if you want to have wireless access, two things you're going to need: a security terminal and a wireless access point. One thing to note is if you're playing on a server, especially where people, even today maybe your friends, you're just slightly worried they might pinch something out of your chests. I would highly recommend getting a security terminal. This basically allows you to stop other players um, interacting with your, uh, or stops them taking stuff out of your ME system, and basically allows you to have security on it. So if you're on single player, it's you only need it for wireless access, and they're not as important. But on servers, you should. Uh, I would highly recommend getting one of these. Um, so then, uh, for if you want to be wireless, you're going to need a security terminal and a ME wireless access point. If you've got a wireless access point, this uses huge amounts of RF to extend your wireless range. Um, use it with wireless access, um, wireless boosters. 64 is the most, and that uses 8k RF tick. Mostly that's going to be too expensive for you, so I would recommend 48 of them, because that only uses nearly uh, less than 2k RF tick, and gives you 350 meters of range, which is really far. Um, I'll just put a full stack in just just to show you but i would not expect uh players uh, it's not sensible to, like even now i i've been using 48 wireless boosters for a long time on mine on the single player world because it's just not worth it having 64 on as it only buffs you by like 200 blocks range so, th so then if you want to wirelessly access it um i mean terminal or uh it's, uh it's called a i think it's so I'd recommend getting a wireless, where is it, uh, I think it's called, yes, wireless terminal. To link it, you put it through this, and that will link it, and then you're going to need to power it. So you might want to get a flux capacitor for that, from Draconic Evolution. So I just quickly turn this on. Um, this is now charged. You can also put this in any charger, but you just need to, this just needs RF to power it. So then you go back here, and then now we've wirelessly accessed that. You can put cryoflux in, and then that's cryoflux done. So now on to the next thing, that is auto crafting. Auto crafting basically allows you to automatically craft an item which you can ask your ME system to do. This does use a small amount of RF, but the main uh, part of it is it's, it's just you're just going to need a lot of blank patterns and a couple of expensive items like a 64k crafting storage. So, say that we connect it by bringing it out of here, um, and let's build it here then, possibly, I'd say. Um, you're going to need, I would recommend having two 64k crafting storages and two crafting code processing units. So that basically allows you to then have it in this setup of, like, alter, or alternate. If you're confused about how to start order crafting, watch my tutorial on it, which I've got. It's a great tutorial. It's very good. So then you're going to want to have alternating with uh, molecular assemblers and ME interfaces. Um, like this, there we are. This is now set up. I also recommend having uh, acceleration cards in each because that speeds it up so much. It makes it so, so, so fast. So if we put... Um, there we are. We've now got... We've used 30 acceleration cards to speed it up. So now we have our auto crafting unit set up. I'd recommend having... Um, so then you're going to want to connect a smart cable in the back of it you can actually use dense smart cables but uh if you've only got one then you it doesn't really matter so let's just connect this um like this and then now that's all set up uh bear in mind that this uses seven channels um which is why you can only have four at max on a dense smart cable but um if you've only got one then you can use uh, just normal smart cables so yeah so then um so the actual auto crafting. You're going to need a pattern terminal. This is what auto crafting is used for, and a lot of blank patterns. You put them in. Then say that uh, you want to always be able to craft um, planks. You put one oak wood in, and then that will say like that. It doesn't actually use up the wood when you um, put it in the terminal. 
uh, but you click encode pattern and then now you have a good plate. Um, if you would like, uh, if you would like any things using the same or dictionary, uh, then you can click that and that allows it. That's mainly useful for, let's say, chisel. Say that chisel has, um, say that you want any andesite to be used in a crafting recipe, because this all his all dictionary names are stone andesite, then, um, any block of andesite will be, um, used to craft it. So then, say that we've now got a pattern, you put it into your, uh, ME interface here on the crafting CPU, or what you can do is going into the ME interface terminal and put it into uh, into the uh, into the section under molecular assembler. That basically will um, allow you now to have it auto craftable, and now it'll appear here saying oak wood planks. See so that I want to craft four of them. It does that and will craft it, and then bang bang boom, we now have oak wood planks. So that's how it works. So now say that you want to uh, allow auto crafting for a sag mill and an alloy smelter from Ender.io. This basically is for any mods which add special, um, maybe machines, which you want to sub auto crafting for that, instead of just vanilla crafting table auto crafting. It will uh, use this use that, uh, this thing for, say, the flux crystal auto crafting. It's the same thing, you set it up the same way. So to set it up, you're going to need a an import bus, and I didn't recommend for acceleration cards, and then also what else you need an interface there are two types of me interface there's this type and then there's the block type you can use this type of like flat interface when you're connecting up to a machine but then the block type if you're building like auto crafting or something so this will say that we now want to get an alloy smelter um smelter there we are let's get an enhanced alloy smelter put this like um here now we can attach an import bus or an interface and an import bus to the side of that. That will basically allow us to auto craft um, anything through the alloy smelter. So you might want to have a smart cable set up like this and connect it like um, like so, uh, like that. There we are. Um, there we are. So now that means you've got this set up and you just put in the patterns for the alloy smelter here. If you're not sure how to set up an alloy smelter pattern, what you need to do is you have to click on crafting pattern, that turns it into a processing pattern. You then say that you want to make maybe a an, an energetic alloy ingot. Uh, to craft that, you, you're going to need one of them to put in the output slot. Make sure it's only one. And then you need one redstone, um, one gold ingot, and one glowstone dust. This is how you craft um, an energetic alloy. Then you do that. You Put that in, then we go to the interface terminal, and then we put in the enhanced alloy smelter. That then means, if you have resources, you can craft energetic alloys. Um, so yeah, so that's how it works. Um, what next? Um, so, see so, so you've got this set up, and you're like, okay, I've got this set up. Um, what else would you might want to add? Say you've got you've got a bunch of shock boxes, and you want to now put them in your brand new ME system. To put them in, you're going to need this. Basically, will automatically when you put the shock box under this, it will take all the items out of the shock box and put them straight into the ME system. So to do it, you're going to uh, say that we get a shock box and we fill it with maybe. Oh, uh, where's the shock box? Here we are. Say that we fill it with. Um, maybe, maybe we could put it. Uh, I'm seeing yes. So it's easy we do it over here. Um, you're gonna need one ME interface, which allows you to. This is what like transfers it from the piping to. So, so, okay, what am I saying? So you've got your shock box. It's filled with security. To them. Um. So then say that you've got your impulse item duct. So now you're gonna need an item duct. This basically will allow you to put the items into the system and it transfers the items across. You're going to need a servo. I would recommend resident servo, but a basic one also works okay. And basically, yeah, the better the servo, the, the more items it'll transfer per like tick or something. So, so select, so keep these settings, but make sure resident is ignored. 
That basically means, as you see, you're going to see security terminals flashing through that. Uh, then, now that means, your ME system is going to start filling up with security terminals. So now you've got a basic ME system, it can uh, export items out of shock boxes, you can wirelessly access it using your wireless terminal, you can uh, auto craft uh, energetic alloys, you can auto craft oak wood, if you want to extend that you just put new patterns into the interface terminal, uh, or into the ME uh, interfaces on the actual uh, machine. You've got your RF source, all of that. Now you should be happy. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I hope it helped. If you've got any questions, uh, just comment below, or you can join my Discord server and ping me or something, and I'll answer a new screenshot, and I'll respond and try and help you. See you up, so bye, I hope you had fun, and see you later.